Hi, today I'm going to show you this incredible magnetic travel palette which uh, I recently got on Etsy. So this is a wooden magnetic palette which has about 15 pans on the left side and a mixing palette on the right. It's about 3 inches uh, square and it has rounded edges and one of the edges is a little sharper because you're going to be clipping it onto your sketchbook. I'll show you during this video further away uh, how to do that. The magnetic part helps to close um, and snap it together and also helps to open it in the center and keeps that intact. It's now time to choose some colors to fill inside this. I have various watercolor tubes and gouache tubes but today I feel like starting with the watercolors. This palette has 15 pans so sometimes it gets very hard for me to decide which 15 colors I should choose and which ones to leave behind. When I'm doing urban sketching it is very hard for me to carry everything that I want with me although I would love to do that. Initially when I used to go for urban sketching I would carry a big bag along with tons of art supplies as I was very worried to skip any. Then slowly the bag got smaller and smaller and today I carry a very compact one. One day I'll put up a video and uh, show you all the various stages of my travel sketching kit and that may help you to understand how an artist's mind works and to know if you think in the same way. This has been by far the most difficult task for me to choose just 15 colors. So basically this exercise is very helpful to narrow down your choices and force your mind to understand your needs and boil it down to the bare minimum that's needed. Today I'm primarily choosing camel artist watercolors while choosing the colors, the things that are running in my mind are to choose basic primaries like the yellows, the blues and the reds so I can mix them and create more colors. I also want to carry some neutrals like white, blacks and browns. So I'm not choosing any primary color in its natural pigment but versions of it. Like instead of the primary yellow, I would be choosing Naples yellow. I'll also have like a Gamboji hue. I've been discovering a lot of new colors lately and falling in love with the color stories that they helped me to create. The way that my mind is working right now is I'm going from whites to yellows to ochres, browns, then greens, blues and reds. The idea is to pick out three colors in each family and then I'll put them together and figure out which ones can be done without. That is how I'm going to go about this exercise and to ensure that there is not too much of burr in my head. I ended up choosing four greens. So I think I may have to reduce that and figure out what other colors I can choose instead. Apart from Camel, the other brands that I'm choosing from are Vincent & Newton, Magello Mission, Daniel Smith and uh, also Senelier. This is just my way of choosing colors. Another way you can choose your colors is by having all the swatches of the different shades of watercolors that you have or gouache if you want to put that and then choose from them. I like this way because I like to feel the tubes, I like to look at my colors and then use them. There are some very interesting colors which are part of my Mijuru Mission set which is the horizon blue, the blue grey, the yellow grey and these are all very interesting colors to work with. So I want to even check if I can include them in my set but since it's 15 I think I'm just going overboard in the way that I'm picking colors. I'm just not able to stop. picked out about 17 and I'm keeping the orange back because it's going to be really easy for me to mix the orange. I just have to mix the red and the yellow. So I decided to skip taking that color in my palette. Time to put the rest together and uh, see which ones work and which ones can be changed. Like I said earlier, I think I picked two uh, mini greens, which is four. So I'm keeping back two so I can include some other colors in my palette. Ever since I discovered the French Ultramarine, that is what I've been sticking with. And uh, I think I need another blue, so I am taking an indigo for now. I am going to put this together and then see if these colors are fine or if I still might need to change a few. So here are the 15 colors that I have picked out. There is Chinese white, Naples yellow, Gamboji hue, raw sienna, burnt umber, sepia, permanent green, olive green, French ultramarine, Peonies gray, indigo, senelier red, horizon blue, lavender and yellow gray. 
I'm now going to put these colors in groups to understand if there is anything that I have picked out wrong to make sure that uh, if there is room to add some better colors, I can do that. So while I'm doing this, I've noticed that there are a lot of yellows to browns. So maybe I can skip something out of this. Although I love sepia, I think I'm going to remove that and switch that for the Maddow's Rose, uh, which I have from Magello Machine. I absolutely love that color and I think I would rather have that um, in my palette as compared to this sepia. So I've got the rose now and I'm removing sepia from my set. You must also be wondering why I'm choosing a white in my watercolor palette, uh, especially if I'm going to be doing watercolors, what is white doing over there? So there are a lot of artists who do not use white at all when you're, they are doing watercolor painting. Uh, I used to be in that bracket earlier where I wouldn't mix white at all to create another color as the opacity gets hit and the paint becomes creamy and it's not as translucent as the other colors. But when you're outdoors, you may need to mix a lot of colors or you may just feel like a specific color and you want to create that. So recent times I have started using white in very different ways and I'm enjoying the uh, finish that it's giving me. I like the mixed media kind of an effect where the creaminess of that color against the translucency of watercolors is working really well for me. While filling up the palette, I noticed that it just requires one tiny squeeze uh, from the tube to fill up these uh, pans. What I'm going to do is I love these paints to dry a bit overnight as the paints are very creamy and they may stick to the palette on the other side. Any excess that is there, it can be removed or just adjusted using uh, a palette knife. You may have noticed how some of the paints are very creamy and some are a little bit more solid than the rest. For example, the Rose Matter is much more creamier in state as compared to the Camel colors. This happens generally with different kinds of brands. I've noticed that um, the Vincent & Newton as well as the Magello Machine, they are much more creamy. Of course, they are more pigmented. Maybe that's the reason. Um, and the Camel is a little bit more solid as compared to the rest. You can also go creative and uh, have seven or eight pans of watercolors and the rest is gouache. That's completely up to you. This is uh, how you can mix it up and have fun with your palette. It's your palette, just design it the way you want it to be. Colors are all filled in and it looks so beautiful. Here are the final 15 colors that I used to fill up my palette. And this is just the first set. Um, I've been using this palette for over a month right now and I have changed the kind of colors that I have used, also the brands of colors that I have used inside it. So um, basis of whatever your need is, you can make changes on that. I love how the colors look against the wood. Um, so it's a very dreamy palette for any urban sketcher or anybody who likes doing painting outside. Here's a quick recap of all of the colors that I've used here in case you want to have a closer look at the ones that I've been using for this. I'm now going to give you a very quick demo of how to use this. I'm having a 300 GSM watercolor sketchbook and the way to use this palette is you can take a tiny bulldog clip and you can just clip this particular palette to it so it depends on the thickness of your clip i can probably take about like 10 pages and then clip it onto that so it becomes really easy when you are standing on the road and then you're sketching something and you want to paint it so your palette doesn't fall down and it becomes really easy for you to track it you don't have to keep searching around for uh, holding different kinds of things in your hands so the palette on the right side, which is for mixing your colors, is very easy uh, to use. If you notice, um, it's it's not like plastic. It has like this really nice enamel on it. It almost gives me the feeling of a ceramic palette, which is something I love using. The colors which you see on the ceramic palette are the actual colors that will be on your paper, as opposed to the ones which you see on a plastic palette. So that way, I love the color mixing palette on the right hand side. It's just so easy and quick to use. You will also be wondering like what happens if you need to mix a lot of color and then there is no space on the palette. 
that is a little bit tricky all you need to do is carry some tissues with you and uh, just remove or keep cleaning your palette every now and then if you need to this palette that i have has the paints on the left side and the mixing palette on the right side so i did see a couple of uh, stores online where they sell the reverse which has the pans on the right and the mixing surface on the left so you can choose what works best for you based on your preference i've been using this for over a month and i'm absolutely in love with this set i'm a right-handed person and um, maybe that's why it's easier for me but um, i don't think there is any specific correlation like that but you could check out uh, all these different stores and see um, which variation would suit your style the best Now one thing this palette doesn't have is a water holding area. So um, what I do is I have this clip on water um, cups which are generally I think used for oil painting. So um, it, it is called as I think a dipper. So I will leave a link of the Amazon um, uh, one over here. I picked this up at a physical store in Chennai a couple of uh, months back and I found this really useful for me for travel uh, painting. So. That is what I end up using um, when I'm doing outside. I will show you a small clip in the end of uh, how I use this palette when I'm outside. You have also seen it in the beginning. There's a small clip of me standing outside doing some little sketch with this uh, palette clipped on. There's also the water clip on and there are some tissues attached to it. Another important thing is you don't necessarily need all of these things to go and start sketching outdoors. You just need to have the drive. All you need first is your sketchbook and probably a pencil or a pen. And you can even carry like a water brush along with you, along with this palette if you can't take water along, uh, which is another thing that I do a lot, uh, very often. And um, if you don't have this palette you can also think of a diy for the palette or you could think of a diy for the water um, can as well so this is how the cute palette is it almost fits my palm and it opens up it um, closes this way and since it is magnetic it's perfect so this is one way of how i use it when i'm outside and this is i was at a cafe and uh, that's a diy cup which was gifted to me by one of my neighbors so this is an absolutely perfect set for you to have i hope this video was helpful for you and uh, i'm leaving the links to purchase this uh, here in the description box you can also check some other stores and buy yours bye bye